uniform infinite line charge. To solve this, let's remember what the results were for the finite line charge. So we had a line charge of length L and uniform charge density rho sub L. Well, the total charge was simply the charge density times the length. And then the total field, well, that was a bit more complicated. And we decided to put it in terms of these angles and integrate from a phi 1 to a phi 2 instead of going from a ZA to ZB. And we ended up with this expression. So rather than repeat all of this math, we can simply take the results from the finite line charge and derive for the infinite line charge. Let's see how that's done. So first, for the total charge, we now have this infinite line charge. So the general expression, total charge, is charge density times the length. Well, what is the length of an infinite line charge? It's infinite. That would make the total charge infinite. Unless the charge density is zero, if it's anything other than zero, we're going to have an infinite total charge. We might have a negative infinite total charge, but we'll have an infinite total charge. Now on to the, the total field. And remember, we integrated from phi 1 to phi 2. So we're going to have to decide what to do with those angles as the line charge becomes infinite. Well, let's think about that. Let's look at phi 1 first. As the line charge becomes infinite, this point ZA walks downward. That would make phi 1 go all the way out to 90 degrees. So phi 1 is 90 degrees for the infinite line charge. Now let's think about ZB. ZB is going to walk up. It's going to pass our projection. And it's going to keep going up, 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 up. So that makes phi 2, which is positive down here, it's going to go up, pass through 0, then become negative, and go all the way up to negative 90 degrees. So for the infinite line charge, phi 2 is negative 90 degrees. So we should be able to plug these angles into our equation for the finite line charge and get the total electric flux. So here's the equation for the finite line charge. We'll simply put in our angles. We'll recognize that sine of 90 degrees, that's 1. Sine of negative 90 degrees, that's negative 1. So we'll have a minus negative 1 or a positive 1. Cosine of minus 90 degrees is 0. Minus cosine of 90 degrees, another 0. So we plug in these numbers, and we get an expression for the total electric flux, which is just charge density over 2 pi rho. Notice it's similar up here, but we had a 4 pi rho, and it's really because we had this stuff in here that would essentially give us the two, that, or a two in the numerator that would cancel with that to give us a two in the denominator. So this is the electric flux around an infinite line charge and it decays as one over row.